Good morning or afternoon or evening wherever you are. Welcome. My name is Katie Wisniewski. I'm the Middle Tennessee Regional Interpretive Specialist for Tennessee State Parks. Yes, that is a mouthful, but I am here at Cummins Falls State Park and I'm going to take you on a virtual hike. It is pretty early in the morning. It's also pretty overcast, which pro tip, pro tip, am I pro? I don't know. But in my experience, this overcast days and early in the morning is when you're going to see more wildlife, maybe some more birds, just some different things than you would see if there was, if it was the middle of the day with a blazing sun heating down at you. So we are going to walk over to the overlook. I'm going to show you the falls, the beautiful Cummins Falls this place is named after. Um, we're going to take a little walk and see what we find along the trail. So when you come to the park, you have to go through a safety training exercise video thing if you want to go down into the gorge but we're going to take this beautiful John Cummins trail because we're not going into the gorge today. Okay I know we haven't gone very far but I do want to stop by this awesome structure. Okay, so we'll do a brief history lesson before we get back on the trail. So Cummins Falls is called Cummins Falls because a man named John Cummins actually acquired this land in 1825 and used the land to build a mill. And because his growing clientele, he built a second mill in 1845. And local residents would visit the mills in the falls for commerce, recreation, etc. Um, the mill was actually washed away in the Great Flood of 1928, but cars and paved roadways had already begun to make the trek to Cummins Falls more accessible. So the land was not rebuilt, but stayed with the Cummins family for over 180 years until the efforts by the Tennessee State Parks and Greenways Foundation purchased the land through private and public donations until 2012 when the state acquired the land um, to make it a state park. So we did, it did get a lot darker. I don't know if my camera settings are gonna adjust to make it look normal. It kind of does look like it. It did get a lot darker and denser. That's because of this tree right here called the Eastern Hemlock. This tree produces very dense cover. So you can see because of the dense cover, not much sunlight is getting through to the forest floor. So we're not seeing that greenery that we were seeing before when the canopy was mostly deciduous trees. This tree provides much needed habitat in a lot of forests. It provides shade for many mammals. It provides root systems for insects. So because of the habitat of the trees, you can also find many mushroom species wherever you find the hemlock growing. The hemlock woolly adelgid is an invasive insect that was introduced from East Asia. The hemlock woolly adelgid feeds by sucking sap from the tree, and it, you can tell the presence of a woolly adelgid by its egg sacs on the underside of the needles. In its native range in Asia, the species is considered not a pest because it is controlled by natural predators and various natural cycles. But since its introduction into the United States, because we do not have any of those natural predators it has taken on a whole new life and is causing severe damage to our hemlock populations. The good news is that there are a lot of people that are aware of the problem including staff at state parks and we are working tirelessly to try to come up with a solution. Lovely patches of green are called mountain laurel. Um, they grow in, you know, high elevation, mountain laurel, or higher elevation in Tennessee. Um, and they actually produce this beautiful um, flower, fl like cluster of flowers in the springtime, late spring. So I would definitely recommend 
this trail in the late spring because I'm sure it is full of flowers. We've also got a nice caterpillar den here. Very interesting. We've got a really cool plant here called Little Brown Jug. Um, and it actually has a flower that looks, it, that's where it gets its name. We are way past flowering season for this plant, but it looks like a little brown jug. I'll insert a picture if I can find one. Um, but it's got this very distinctive heart-shaped leaf with these splotches on it. But another way that you can identify this plant is by breaking off a piece of the leaf, just giving it a little sniff. And it smells like kind of like root beer to me, in my opinion. But yes, it's a very, very cool kind of sniffy scratch and sniff flower. So here on the trail, we've got a downed log obviously they cut it for trail purposes but one thing that's really 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 good for wildlife is standing dead trees and also logs like that so you might think that it's dangerous or you know it's a dead tree so it's not going to give back to the forest but it's actually one of the most important trees for wildlife habitat. Um, it will provide nesting and food sources for birds, bats, some larger mammals like foxes, squirrels, chipmunks. I would definitely recommend leaving those standing dead trees, especially if you want to provide wildlife habitat. I found this little guy crawling. I'm so glad I did not step on him. I believe this is a millipede called the Kentucky flat-backed millipede. And it's very distinct, got that flat back as opposed to the rounded back of other millipedes. This bright yellow coloring. He's actually bright yellow because he will emit a little bit of cyanide. So he's not good to eat. He's going to emit this bright color to let predators know I'm poisonous. I found this really cool fern on the side of the trail here. This is called a Christmas fern and it is evergreen. It's actually green year round. It's a type of fern that will stay green all through the winter. And a cool way to identify it is something that I remember is if you take a look at the leaf, it looks a little bit like a stocking or like Santa's sleigh. I have also heard the tale that when settlers came over to the United States, they found these evergreen ferns and would make wreaths out of them for Christmas. So that is why it's called a Christmas fern. I'll get my face out of here. You don't want to look at my face. Thank you guys for coming on my virtual hike to Cummins Falls. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you'll get to come to the park soon. Just remember to check the website and check the weather and make sure things are all set to go if you want to go into the gorge. Um, but for now, I will leave you with a beautiful view.